You need to know who to start and sit for fantasy football in week 11. Well, ladies and gents, you came to the right place. CBS Local Sports, that's where Dave Richard, Jamie Eisenberg, and myself will tell you who you need to start and sit for your fantasy football team. And there can only be one start of the week. And that would be Carson Palmer, who, by the way, for the second time this year, gets that honor. Yeah, and hopefully he delivers. You know, I think it's a good matchup for him against the Bengals at home. You see Cincinnati on a short week, long road trip to Arizona. Palmer's going off an amazing game last week in Seattle where he got you 26 fantasy points. He will deliver another 20-plus point game this week. You start him and start him with confidence. And you could start him over one Andy Dalton, who's been fantastic this year but is on the decline. I don't like saying that one bad game is going to mess with Andy Dalton. What about two of the last three? Bad. Well, you're stealing my line, man. <laughs> two of his last three have been not good. I think Andy Dalton is an okay start this week. I would try and get away from him if you can. That Arizona secondary is pretty darn good. I think Dalton's going to have a hard time coming up with a big game on the road against the Cardinals. Hey, and that primetime bugaboo, it's back for Andy Dalton. It might be. We'll see how he ends up doing. Bugaboo, how old are you? Uh, not too old. <laughs> Sorry, Kendrick West, by the way, though, he's pretty young, and he's running really well, too. I think Kansas City has learned to lean on West, and he's going up against San Diego. They're, they're getting a couple pieces back on defense, so their run defense might not be awful, but it's been awful. And I think they'll goof, go from awful – to not very good. It still means that Sharkandrick West can go out there and get you double digits and fantasy points. I like him a lot this week. Well, if you run west, you could head for the hills, but don't start Jeremy Hill this Look week. Look at you. Wow, very fancy. Uh, good bugaboo there. Um, I think <laughs> Jeremy Hill, look, you know what he is at this point. It's now been three games where he hasn't scored a touchdown. No, he doesn't score a touchdown. It's pretty ugly for him. So, uh, and again, same thing. Tough matchup. I think you'll see them chasing points. What we saw last week against the Texans, I think, is more to come. A lot more Giovanni Bernard, a lot less Jeremy Hill. That's good for the Bengals, it's good for fantasy owners too. What's not good is a lot less Julian Edelman because he is out for the fantasy season. But good news is Tom Brady's pretty good and he can throw to any receiver on the planet, right? Yeah, I would like to think so. And you've seen a pretty good track record for Amendola when he's been asked to do a little bit more. He's got four games this season with five or more targets. In three of those, he's gotten at least seven fantasy points. So I think you'll see the numbers be there for him with the targets up. Edelman was averaging 10 targets a game. That has to go to some play. Amendola's going to get the biggest boost, but so will LaFell. And he scored twice against Buffalo last year. So it should be good for those guys. And these two could have a better game than one A.J. Green, who, much like Andy Dalton, has been on the decline. He Now, that's a guy who's legitimately been on the decline, and he just hasn't been clicking with Andy Dalton for much of this season. He's had great games here or there, but I just haven't seen it lately. I hate the fact that he fumbled away a ball last week. He's going to get locked up with Patrick Peterson. He's a great cornerback for Arizona. He hasn't allowed a touchdown to a receiver this year. I think A.J. Green has a bad game. I know it sounds crazy to sit A.J. Green. We drafted him with a top 24 pick, but do it. Not the same guy. Very difficult matchup this week. One guy we haven't talked about in this video is Tony Romo. He is back for the Dallas Cowboys. That means good things for anybody wearing a star on their helmet. Yeah, and that includes Jason Witten, who is eight catches away in his career for 1,000. So if he does a little bit better than this projection says, he's going to have that record to himself or at least reach that 1,000 catch mark. But he'll also have a great fantasy game for everybody who starts him. I like him against Miami. They've been bad against tight ends. And, hey, if you've been paying attention, you'll notice a theme. Our sits include anybody with a bangle and stripes on their helmets, and that continues at tight end. Yes, yeah, sorry, Cincinnati. I do like Marvin Jones, though. I think he has a good opportunity mm -hmm. this week to help Andy Dalton, but I don't think Tyler Eifert will. You look at what the Cardinals have done against tight ends. Gary Barnard is the only guy to beat them up so far this season. I think you'll see another down game for Eifert. He struggled last week. He also struggled two weeks ago. So this is going to be a game where you can get away from the Bengals' stars. Eifert's guy you can potentially sit this week. Getting close to playoff time in fantasy football. Hopefully this advice helps lead you to a win. Thanks for watching.